there's one thing we have a lot of at Micro Center, that's keyboards. And today, I'm gonna show you how to build your own keyboard, uh, but not one as big as this one. Now, the keyboard we're gonna be making today, you actually do not need a soldering iron for. So I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna put this away. Because today we'll be using the Inland Gaming MK 75% Bare Bones. Now this guy is in an aluminum case, and this has a very good weight to it. I like a keyboard with a lot of weight in the base. And this comes with nothing else. It just comes with this base. But if you get the switches and the keycaps, you put them all together, you have yourself a keyboard. So we're gonna show you how to make a very basic hot swappable keyboard in this video. In future videos, we'll talk about soldering to the boards or lubing switches and getting really into the nitty gritty. But I think for right now, we're just gonna start with this guy. So when you're putting your keyboard together, this one's gonna have three main components. We have our base, then our switches, although we'll be using the real size, not the giant size. And then you have your keycaps. For the keycaps, I picked this nice gray gradient here. I think this one actually looks pretty cool. So let's get into it. First thing you have to do when you wanna make your keyboard is make a decision on what switches you want to use. Now I have a couple of different switches here. We have cherry reds, we have blacks, we have browns, and we have blues. But what does this all mean? Well, the blues are these extra clicky kind of switches. And th these are the ones that mechanical keyboards are notorious for because they make a lot of that clicky clacky noise. Now the red and black switches, these are linear switches, so it just has a straight travel. There's no feedback when you press the key, so you don't feel any like clickiness when you're pressing it down. I actually prefer linear switches. Then you have the brown switches, and these are tactile switches, so they give you that kind of tactile feedback, but they don't make as much noise as the blue switches do. And then there's a variety of other switches as well that are available, but we're just gonna look at these four right now. So for this build, I'm actually gonna go with the MX Black switches. Usually I use the red switches, and I do like a good linear switch, but sometimes these could be a little too delicate when you, and you can press them down accidentally. The black ones are gonna have a little bit more force required to get a full press, so I'm gonna give these a shot. Now, this is a hot swappable base. That means that when you put the switches in, you can swap them out at any time. Because they're not soldered in, you can make any changes you want. So if you try some blue switches and you find that maybe they're too noisy, you wanna go for the browns, you can just take them out, put in some browns, and you're good to go. That's what I like about these. They're very versatile. It gives you a lot of options. And let's face it, we're all here because we love customizing things. So assembly is actually gonna be very straightforward. I've got my switches right here. You open your box. And you have this very big bag of switches. I'm gonna take these other switches out of the way. Cool. So I've got the MX Black switch right here and it has these two little contact points on the back, these little prongs that come out. These are the contact points for the switch. So when the switch is pressed, it completes the circuit and it sends the signal to your computer. So you see that these prongs are kind of offset and there's these two little offset holes that are on the base here. So it's pretty simple. You just take this guy, you're gonna line it right up, you're gonna gently place it down, and there you go, your switch is inserted. And what I like about these hot swappable keyboards is that you got this little tool here, and it has these teeth on the front. So you can take this guy, and there's these latches on the top and bottom of the switch. You're just gonna press it down. It's gonna let you detach the switch, you gotta pull it out. There you go. So if you ever wanna change your switches to something else, if you wanna go from blacks to blues to reds, you always have that option available. Let's start putting in some switches. So this is the part where you put on a nice playlist and then maybe you're just gonna watch a little time lapse of me putting this guy together. Ayo, look at that. And that's how you put a bunch of switches into a mechanical keyboard. Now let's move on to the keycaps. This has a very nice little gray gradient starting at the function keys and working its way down. I think it looks pretty cool. Look at that. And to make our lives nice and easy, you can see that the keycaps are already laid out in the proper orientation for what we need. So you've got your escape and then function keys, tilled, got your QWERTY, everything else. So I'm gonna start on the top left corner with the escape key. And there's a little cross pattern here. And that's actually what's gonna latch the key onto the switch. And you can see right here, 
the button on the switch, all you gotta do is match them up, press it down, and there you go. So you can hear that, that's a nice linear click. It actually feels pretty good. I do like this a little bit more than my reds. Now let's get this laid out. And then after F4, you have F5. I wonder what comes next. Oh wait, maybe it's F6. There's no way we can top that, but oh, there it is, F7. F7 doesn't want to get in there. Come on, there we go. So this is a 75% keyboard, so the layout's gonna be a little bit different. I actually prefer the 100% keyboards with the numpad. So, oh, we got a delete key, that's what that one is. So over here, we put delete. Unfortunately, this kit comes with a delete both in black, but it also has one in gray. So depending on the orientation of the delete key on your keyboard, you'll be covered. So you have one that you can put up here, you can have one that you can put down there. So there's little extra touches that really make it all kind of come together, you know? Because it'd be awkward having a different colored key up here. All right, let's move on to the next row. And we have our backspace. So this one's gonna be a little bit wider than the other one, so you can see in the middle. The switch is gonna connect here in the middle, and then it's gonna line up here. And these are kind of our stabilizers that are built into the board, so that's gonna help keep these longer keys stable and in place. So that's what these guys are. So this one, you're just gonna line it up and it's just gonna go right in. Super simple. Kwerty. Wordy. Isn't that QWERTY? <laughs> Kevin is shaking his head no behind the camera. <laughs> WASD, the most important keys on this guy. Yeah, that already feels pretty good. I like that a lot. I don't know if you can hear that on the camera, but feels nice. That's not right. This is the one we want. So now you can see there's two different enter key shapes. I forget the name of this one again, but basically some keyboards have different layouts for the enter key. Sometimes you get this big fat one or you get the long one. This one's got the long one. I know this one has an official name. I'm gonna get flamed in the comments for forgetting it, but we'll definitely cover that in a future video. This guy's another one. The center column here is gonna be for the switch. The two side ones are gonna be for these like little stabilizer guys. And it's upside down, but you just line it up. ZX, oh no, I swapped my keys. <laughs> All right, that's where this guy's gonna come in handy. Uh, I made a mistake, I actually put these in reverse. I thought that looked wrong. So this one's actually pretty simple. This tool, you just kinda push it down. You see how it catches onto the cap. And you just kinda pull it up, and there you go. And that's why they call it a keycap puller. Pulls the keycap right off. There we go, ZX, C, and then V. All right, that's better. Same deal for this guy. Switch is gonna be right here in the center. So here's our center column. These are gonna be the stabilizers. So you're just gonna center this up. Let's see if I found it. Yeah, there we go, that feels right. Last, but certainly not least, control there we go that's the last one now obviously I'm not a great typist I probably do like 20 words per minute but this feels wonderful I'm just gonna type haphazardly now what I really like about this kit is that it already comes with a very nice looking coiled USB-C cable so I'll use this guy. I'm gonna run this to our studio PC, get it fired up. On the back here, there's a little switch. So depending on what system you use, if you're on Windows or Mac, it is compatible. And the uh, keycaps will come with the right caps for your systems. I'm gonna set this to Windows. 
All in all, I think this is a very solid keyboard. I really like this a lot. And I gotta say the weight on this guy feels amazing. <laughs> I'm gonna unplug it right now. They hook you up with this really nice coiled USB cable, which I like a lot. This one looks great. So again, this is a hot swappable board. You can swap out the switches whenever you want. You can swap out the keycaps whenever you want. So if you wanna go from this set, maybe go to a different blue, maybe you wanna to go to, let's say a clickier switch, you always have that option available to you. And honestly, it's really easy. Now we're gonna make more videos about keyboards. We're gonna do different configurations, maybe try out a couple of different switches and demonstrate what they sound like on camera. And uh, make sure you stay tuned. We're gonna show you how to solder your own boards and get really complex when it comes to keyboards. So that's a beginner's guide to making your own keyboard. And again, that's using the Inland Gaming MK Pro 75% keyboard. I really like this gray gradient on this guy. I think this looks really smooth. This is a good understated look. The lights still come through kind of at an angle, but again, with the blacked out switches, it doesn't shine through completely. Uh, but remember, this is just a beginner guide. So this is a hot swappable keyboard. There's a lot more when it comes to the keyboard world. I mean, we're talking about soldering and lubricating switches and lubricating stabilizers and everything else, but we're gonna get there in another video. But for now, stop by your local Micro Center, check out some of this, and also check out the rest of our keyboard selection. And if you don't have a Micro Center near you, make sure you comment hashtag, I want a Micro Center near me. <laughs> Look at that, that is heavy. Like you, you could, yeah, you could do some damage with this guy. So that's a beginner's guide to making your own keyboard. And again, that's using the Inland Gaming MK Pro 75% keyboard.